Well, good afternoon. Thanks for, for being here today. Um, before I begin, let me just say a few words about what took place in Anchorage uh, yesterday, the, the loss of life, the 16 uh, people that were injured, 34 students that are from the school district that, are, that live in that, uh, uh, in that facility that, that burned. Um, our hearts and prayers go out to them. But I also want to thank those that responded. I want to thank the, the first responders that were there, those the volunteers that have been there to help um, kind of ease the transition uh, when they lost what they've lost. And so I just want to, uh, it's a, it's a, a very significant uh, loss in Alaska, and I certainly wanted to, uh, to acknowledge that. Um, you know, two nights ago, I issued a, um, uh, a declaration of disaster. It was a different kind of declaration of disaster than we, we have issued in the past, and it was one that was very, very appropriate. Um, um, you know, we have uh, here today those that are that on a weekly basis, uh, we have stood up uh, a weekly meeting to get briefings on the, um, uh, on the issue of opioid uh, crisis that we're in. And I want to, uh, the First Lady uh, Donna Walker certainly is, is, has been very involved in that. Dr. Jay Butler, you're going to hear from him a little bit today, a Chief Medical Officer, uh, Commissioner Valerie Davidson, uh, Health and Social Services, um, Commissioner uh, Dean Williams, Commissioner of Corrections, uh, very involved in, in this as well. And so, of course, uh, Commissioner Walt Monaghan, Commissioner of Public Safety, has, has been very involved in it. Uh, and Dr. Michael Johnson, of uh, Commissioner of Education, uh, is at the table on a, on a weekly basis on this. Uh, from the Attorney General's Office, we have here today Jim Cantor. Um, we have Andy um, uh, Jones is here, a Section Chief of the Department of Health. Uh, Scott Kendall, the um, uh, Chief of Staff, and Darwin Peterson, our Legislative Director. So we have, um, we have taken a, a much more aggressive approach, uh, and the reason we have is because it's appropriate. Yeah, the reason we have is because we hear everywhere we go around the state, uh, we hear stories of, of, of a loss of a loved one, loss of a, of a spouse, loss of a child, a nephew, a friend. Um, and associated with the, this this terrible uh, addiction that's out there is is uh, is is the, is the crimes that the, the 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 property crimes are associated with that. So it's it reached a point we said it's it's time to uh, issue this declaration of disaster. And I, I want to um, thank the uh, the legislature for the, the the words of support that they have have added to our message. We really appreciate that. This is the this is there's everybody in the state of Alaska needs to come together on this issue, and 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 they are they, they certainly are. Um, today I'm announcing the, um, well, let me just talk a little about what the, uh, the reason we did the Declaration of Disaster. It was to allow to be able to have this, uh, this naloxone um, uh, issued under standing order without that uh, um, Declaration of Disaster that would not be, uh, Dr. Butler will talk a bit about um, what, what this does and, and, and why we, we did it when we did it. And it was one of the, um, uh, the urgency, it couldn't have been more urgent uh, when we issued that to be able to, to use this. The legislature passed this last year, and we applauded that, but we needed one more step in order to be able to make sure that those that were not directly under his control uh, could also uh, utilize this, uh, first responders, et cetera. This is what saves lives. So, so that, was, um, that was very important. Um, you know, obviously, it's going to take more legislation. There's no, no question about that. And we look forward to working with the legislature uh, on that. I talked about that a bit during the State of the State, and, and we'll, we'll continue to talk about that a bit, a bit more. You know, we're, we're unveiling our, what we call the, the, safe, the safe Alaska plan uh, today and about how, how the steps that we're going to take uh, to make Alaska safer and to make Alaskans safer is, is, is a major part of that. You know, this epidemic, as I said, it does touch it touch everybody. I mean, it's not one particular region, one particular income strata. It's, it is widespread. And, and it's just the, the stories are just horrific from, from across the state. Um, today I'm going to sign Administrative Order 283 uh, here when I'm done speaking in a few minutes. Uh, it, it's Administrative Order that sets in place a... Um, uh, a process basically to follow through on what I had uh, talked about during the State of the State. It, it, it takes on issues associated with uh, interception uh, of drugs that are going out into, into communities and in, into, into Alaska's hands. It, 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 it involves the ability for and encourages and directs um, all commissioners to go after every federal dollar that's available to bring into this, uh, into this state for this. There are federal dollars available on, on grants, and so I, we're aggressively going to, going to be going after that. <coughs> It addresses the issue in, um, of people coming out of prison. 
there are things that um, uh, that that can be done um, uh, on the way out that uh, uh, will better ensure that they will not be coming back again. Uh, so there's there's processes, and, and Dr. Butler can uh, can talk about that a, a bit as well. So it's um, and we're also standing up a um, uh, incident command system and. You know, those that are familiar with, we know typically we do that during oil spills, earthquakes, fires. This is every bit uh, a, a disaster that we need. It. We're, so we're, we've, st we've stood up a incident command system that um, uh, we have weekly meetings in this room, uh, reports about what's happened since the last week, what's going to happen during the next week, uh, and uh, Dr. Jay Butler will be, uh, will be in charge of that, uh, that ICS. He'll be our ICS commander. So, I mean, we are, I don't think... I don't think there's anything we're not doing that, that, that could be done at this point because it, it's that kind of a, of a crisis in our state, a kind of an epidemic in our state that we need to, need to um, uh, attack it head on. Um, so I'm going to um, – uh, so we have some, some things to hand out. I know we don't you – know, uh, we, we want you to see the incident command system that, that we're standing up. Um, we, are, we are addressing this like, like, like a forest fire or any other um, uh, crisis that hits our state. This is an, in, in, in that kind of a mode. So uh, I have an administrator order I'm going to sign, <coughs> and then I'm going to turn this over to Wait. Dr. Butler. So we're going to move the microphones. Yeah. With that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Dr. Butler, okay. and uh, thank you very much for, for being here today. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Governor Walker. Yes. I, I don't want to give your talk. So. Uh, we're here, as the governor said, because of an opioid epidemic. Uh, my background in public health, I actually tend not to use the word epidemic, but I think it's appropriate in this instance because there's no other single cause of death that we've seen the kind of increase, really a quadrupling among Alaskans over the last 10 years. The reason we're gathered today is well, all of us here is to recognize that the challenge of the opioid epidemic is that it's more than just a criminal justice issue, but it's also a health issue. And we need to address it very broadly in terms of being a health issue, a public safety issue, an education issue, a medical practice issue. We need to have a multi-pronged approach. So uh, the governor mentioned the disaster declaration and the opportunity that created for us to be able to provide uh, naloxone. Uh, a question you may be wondering is, well, why now? Uh, hasn't this been going on for a while? Well, it has actually been going on for a while, but it continues to evolve. And, you know, when we look back 10 or 15 years, we began to see the increase in the number of deaths. And much of that was driven by use of prescription opioids, oftentimes misuse leading to overdose. About five years ago, heroin became much more cheaper and actually easier to administer for many people than uh, using prescription drugs, so heroin became much more popular. In the past two years, we've seen an influx of the very powerful opioid fentanyl. Fentanyl can be obtained and processed very cheaply. I'm, I'm told at about 5% of the cost of heroin. So even when heroin is purchased, it may contain fentanyl. There have been instances where prescription pills that are counterfeit but actually contain fentanyl have been uh, confiscated in the lower 48. And when those pills are ground up and injected, the risk of uh, overdose is very high. So uh, because, the, I mean, the latest sort of twist on this is that oftentimes people who overdose don't actually know they may be using fentanyl, and that further increases the risk of an overdose. So um, we have now the opportunity to uh, work with partners to distribute the naloxone kits. As you can see, it's very easy to, to carry. I work on visuals as much as possible. Um, and uh, we are working with uh, partners around the state uh, to get them engaged with Project HOPE, we call it, which uh, is an opportunity to be able to distribute naloxone kits and receive the training in the appropriate use. I do want to point out, though, uh, it's not a cure-all. It's like a tourniquet in a, a severe trauma case. It saves a life, 
but it does not cure addiction. And so that's why a much broader based approach is needed and that's where the incident command structure helps us to coordinate. And it breaks down the bureaucratic silos, but also it's important to recognize that we work with communities as well. So my, my call to all Alaskans is let's look at this issue and talk about let's see what we can do to solve this problem because it is going to take all of us. So I, I want to thank the governor, thank the members of the cabinet for their leadership in recognizing the importance of this issue, of uh, bringing everybody together today of the, for the administrative order. I also want to thank uh, the people on the front line, uh, the people who uh, provide treatment, the family members, and the people who are in recovery, who I think are the best spokespeople for the hope that we can have in terms of the, uh, the ways that we can move from lifestyles uh, that involve addiction to lifestyles of recovery. Uh, so with that, I will turn it back over to the, the governor to introduce uh, much better speakers than me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we uh, turn, open up for questions, I want a few words from, uh, from, from Kara and Christine. So, uh, Kara. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Governor Walker and First Lady Donna, who have been such supporters of ours from the beginning. I remember some of our very first testimony trying to get Nalox on on the street, and um, it's very surreal to be here today. As we have moved forward and you stuck to your word, and you stayed steady, and you listened to the Alaskans, and you've really brought this forward in a way that we could have, we, we dreamed about, that we couldn't imagine because it felt so dark and that we weren't heard. Today, we know we're heard and we know our voices are very important in moving forward, not only to understand you know, what, what the addiction resources are and substance use and mental health disorders and the criminalization of that, but to also not just be um, stories, but really elevate the recovery movement and people that are in recovery. There's thousands of people in our state in recovery and who aren't able to speak out because of the stigma and the shame that's associated with that. And that's where people die. And so I just um, really thank you so much. And Dr. Jay Butler is one of my personal favorites and his team. And, and everyone back here, I've, I've had the honor to work with many of them over the years and, and my growth as someone coming up as a recovery advocate and really understanding that um, treatment, detox, prevention, those are all very important pieces. But the long-term recovery, we have to treat this as a public health issue because that's what it is. And people are dying and we deserve, all Alaskans deserve to have the medical care that, that they should have as a public health issue. And so I'm just um, honored to be here. And um, as someone in long-term recovery, that means that I have you know, been able to be a mother, a community leader I make change in our state but most importantly I get to help others and pull them out of freedom and that peer support is crucial as we move forward and we're gonna hold all of you all accountable to do what you say are gonna do as you have so thank you very much thank you and Christine you want to say a few words thank you so much um, my name is 